I wanted to like so badly. I am very excited to read anything she writes. Who wants that? I don't read a lot of books with happy themes. I had no freaking idea what was going on. Best book I've read this year. This idiot who sucks and we hate him. I love women. Hi, I'm Sam. There's quite literally no one asking me to do this, but I want to do the mid-year freakout tag. So the first question is, best book you've read so far this year? I just put out a video chronicling my top 10 reads of the year so far. So if you are so inclined, you should go check that out. But when I was thinking about the best book I've read this year, you're probably not surprised to know the answer, is Hawk Mountain by Connor Habib. So I've talked about this ad nauseum. A guy runs into his childhood bully and we are switching perspectives between present day and back when he was a kid and getting bullied and in present day the bully is now trying to weasel his way into our protagonist's life and it's super gripping super tense so good so you should read it next is best sequel you've read so far this year another book and series that i've talked about so much already but that is ptsd radio this is a manga series that borrows from japanese folk tales to tell these little spooky short stories and it's really really good and you should read this too next is a new release that you haven't read yet but you want to so I have two for these that I could think of the first is May Fly by CJ Lead this is like a female American psycho in Disneyland or Disney World so very much looking forward to that and the other one is The Salt Grows Heavy by Cassandra Ka this one I'm excited to read but also hesitant because the only other Cassandra Ka I've read is Nothing But Blackened Teeth that one I wanted to like so badly but it just wasn't it for me and I'm not sure if Cassandra Ka's writing style is one that vibes super well with my brain so I definitely want to give them another chance but again cautiously optimistic okay so this synopsis is you may think you know how the fairy tale goes a mermaid comes to shore and weds the prince but what the fables forget is that mermaids have teeth and now her daughters have devoured the kingdom and burned it to ashes on the run the mermaid is joined by a mysterious plague doctor with a darkness of their own Deep in the eerie snow-crusted forest, the pair stumble upon a village of ageless children who thirst for blood, and the three saints who control them. The mermaid and her doctor must embrace the cruelest parts of their true nature if they hope to survive. Yeah, I love women killing and burning whole cities to the ground, so very much looking forward to this. Number four, most anticipated release for the second half of the year. I have two. First, Normal Women by Ainsley Hogarth. I read Mother Thing by Ainsley Hogarth last year, was one of my faves of the year. Love her writing style. And then the second one is Death Valley by Melissa Broder. Again, Melissa Broder is another one who was on my best books of 2022. She just has such a razor sharp wit about her so i am very excited to read anything she writes next is biggest disappointment so this one's kind of hard because no no it actually wasn't that hard i'm lying my biggest disappointments tend to be ones where i have such high hopes for them and it's kind of unfair because i feel like my standards for these books are higher going in than other books so it's a little unfair but uh, i am what i am so my personal most disappointing book of the year was yn by esther yi this is about a woman who becomes obsessed with this man in a korean k-pop band and she starts writing fan fiction and that eventually drives her to travel to Korea to try and find this man that she is obsessed with. I did this as a buddy read with Monica from Dog Eared Musings and the buddy reading experience was fantastic. I loved that. But I think what the novel built up in the first half just kind of petered out at the end. And by the end, I just really had no freaking idea what was going on. So overall, this wasn't a total hit for me, but I don't think this was bad, you know? I think this was still like three, three and a half stars. And I think that what this book is doing commentary around fandom culture and parasocial relationships and the idea of being the best fan are so interesting and in watching interviews with Esther Yi, having her explain what the book is about she is almost really meta about describing the book too so I feel like the whole reading experience and like watching interviews has been super interesting but the book as a standalone my first read through was a little disappointing next is biggest surprise so again on the flip side I think ones that surprise me the most are the ones where I go in having no expectations. I just expect 
nothing from them. And then when they give me an exciting story, I'm like, oh, wow, this is so good. So that is what happened with Open Throat. I went into this, I got the audiobook. It's a really short audiobook. I was like, cool, I have some errands today. Maybe I'll be able to finish this audiobook while I run my errands. And then it just literally had me so riveted. And I like found myself wanting to do more errand and chore type stuff because I wanted to just keep listening to it so I could finish it. So this is about a gay mountain lion who lives under the Hollywood sign. And most of it is just him making these observations about humans that pass by him in the park that he lives in. We get into the effects of climate change and how they impact his ability to live, what drove him to live where he currently lives. And it was just so freaking good. It was kind of a melancholy read, but there were a lot of parts that were extremely funny too. So I would absolutely recommend this. I think everyone should read this. It was so, so good. Okay, next is favorite new author. For this, I wanted to choose an author that I've read multiple books of theirs. So I decided to go with Samata Schweblin. Last year, I read Fever Dream by her, really loved it, was one of my favorite books of the year. And then this year I read Little Eyes, which may be even better than Fever Dream. She just has a really distinct writing style and a lot like her novel Fever Dream, she's really good at writing these fever dreamy type scenarios and situations that are just so creeping and eerie and dread inducing and I like it. Next is Newest Fictional Crush, which I admittedly don't read a ton of romance. The only romance I read are usually like boys love. I read some webtoons and surprisingly the webtoons that I read are romance but I think typically I don't love novelizations of romance because reading about it I can't picture what's happening in my mind so I'm just like this is cringe but when it's a webtoon or a manga obviously I can see what's happening so I'm like Okay, so for this, you know, I'm obviously not actually crushing on these guys because they're literal high school boys, but I wanted to choose these two because typically when I start a series that has some sort of romantic elements, I very quickly and decisively choose who I want the protagonist to end up with, like basically who I ship. And this is the first series where I'm actually having a hard time choosing my main ship. I keep like switching back and forth between the two leading men. So my fictional crushes, are Unhyuk and Dauha from Operation True Love by Kokali and Deledam, which I think those are just like usernames. I don't think those are their real names, but this is about a high school girl who mysteriously finds this like weird pink flip phone in her locker one day and it tells her how many love points she has. So each person has a certain amount of love points depending on how many people romantically love them. And she finds that she has zero love points and she's informed that if she doesn't get her love points up by a certain time she is gonna die. So she's in this dead-end relationship with this idiot who sucks and we hate him. And then as the story progresses, she becomes closer with these two guys, Unhyuk and Daoha. And um, let's just say it's been really difficult for me to choose my main ship. Every chapter that includes one or the other, I'm like, okay, you're my ship now. No, you're my ship now. So um, gotta choose those guys. Next is newest favorite character. Gotta be the mountain lion from Open Throat. He was hilarious, loved him. But I also I really liked Martha from Sorrow and Bliss because I just love her journey and that was a very healing read for me. And next is a book that made you cry. Have not cried from a book this year. I very rarely cry from books, but when I do, I'm like scream crying. So not yet, haven't cried yet, but that's, you know, it is what it is. Next is a book that made you happy. I don't read a lot of books with happy themes or themes that inspire happiness. But a couple books that were super funny to me and just a total romp were Patricia Wants to Cuddle by Samantha Allen and Big Swiss by Jen Began. These both are like unhinged female leads, but in a funny way. So Patricia Wants to Cuddle is like bachelor reality TV show. We're following the female contestants in the woods. It's close to the finale. And then they mysteriously start to get picked off one by one by something or someone. Big Swiss is about this Woman named Greta who is super super weird super outlandish she's a weird lady she is a transcriptionist for a sex coach and she develops a relationship with one of his patients unbeknownst to the therapist and unbeknownst to the patient too the patient doesn't realize that she's been transcribing her sessions so super freaking weird but weird makes me happy apparently next is most beautiful book you have acquired this year and um not to brag but I actually haven't bought that many books this year and and I've been doing a really good job of reading books on my physical TBR and I've unhauled a lot of books. So like, 
bragging over, but a couple books that I've been really happy to acquire. This was like one of my only cover buys of the year, so I thought that it would be fitting to include it. So that is What Mad Universe by Frederick Brown. I had never heard of this book. I just happened to see it at Half Price Books. And this cover is just so cool. It's so funky. I love the vintage look of it. The spine's really cool. And despite being like this really old book, the dust jacket is actually in pretty good shape. And I think this was like a dollar. So even though I'm not a super big sci-fi girly, I think this will still be kind of fun. So this is about Keith Winton, who is an editor of a popular science fiction magazine. And he's spending a quiet weekend at his boss's country estate. It is a day of the first moonshot, and Keith is looking forward to witnessing the explosion of the unmanned rocket, which will signal its landing. But something goes wrong. The rocket plummets to Earth, and a piece lands too close to Keith. When he awakens, he returns to town and enters a world as bizarre and intimidating as any created for his magazine. So I think this is going to be kind of like an absurd, quirky, sci-fi, goofy, silly time. But the cover is really cool. I love the vintage look. And then another one that I was really excited to find is this hardcover edition of The Devil All the Time by Donald Ray Pollock. A lot of what I see at bookstores is this paperback version that says, now a movie on Netflix. And it's like, who wants that? You know, the hardcover version is so much prettier. The spine has like this map detail, the back, it's just so much prettier. And I was really excited to find this used for like seven books. So yes. Next, what books do you need to read before the end of the year? As I mentioned, I've been really trying to make moves against my TBR cart. So I still have quite a few books on my TBR cart. And what I wanted to do is just kind of look through those books and choose the ones that I absolutely want to finish by the end of the year. So I ended up choosing quite a few. So I'm just going to kind of like do quick cuts of them and not really go over the synopses because most of these I've explained before. So yeah, I'm just going to let it rip. The Sluts by Dennis Cooper. The Pisces by Melissa. Broder, The Post Mortal by Drew McGarry, Hurricane Season by Fernanda Melchor, translated by Sophie Hughes, Hellbent by Lee Bardugo, Jawbone by Monica Ojeda, translated by Sarah Booker, The Glassy Burning Floor of Hell by Brian Evenson, Seven Empty Houses by Samantha Schweblin, translated by Megan McDowell, Out by Natsuo Kurino, translated by Steven Snyder, Animal by Lisa Tadeo, Mother for Dinner by Shalom Oslander, PTSD Radio Omnibus Volume 3 by Masaki Nakayama, the Yellow Wallpaper by Charlotte Perkins Gilman, The Drifting Classroom by Kazuo Umez, Lullabies for Little Criminals by Heather O'Neill, and The Discomfort of Evening by Marique Lucas Reineveld, translated by Michelle Hutchison. And then the last question is, favorite booktube community member? So I couldn't just settle on one because there are a few that I religiously watch. The first is Allison Pages. Her reading style isn't exactly overlapping with mine, but she just has super cozy videos and I just want to be her best friend. Honestly, I kind of want to be all of these creators' best friends, but she makes a lot of really cool, fun content, and I love her editing. Next is Monica from Dog Eared Musings. She makes arguably some of the best book review videos I've ever seen on BookTube. Her reviews are really thoughtful, and you can tell she really puts in the work and the time to understand the book and understand the author, and I just think that her content is great. And then the last one is Angie from Maybe I'll Read Today. They are super funny. I love their sense of humor and I feel like all of the memes they share on Instagram, I'm like, we should be best friends. So those are the creators I love on BookTube. I think you should follow them on Instagram, subscribe to them, give them all the love because they are fantastic. So that was the mid-year freakout tag. I made a huge freaking mess of all of my books in the name of creating this tag. Thank you so much for watching. You can like this video if you want, comment, subscribe if you want. I would love to have you. Let me know what you're reading. What have been the best and worst books of your year? What have been your biggest surprises, biggest disappointments? Let me know. Okay, love you guys so much. Goodbye.